Back in June, I came across a website that won award site of the day along with the developer award. The animations were impressive, but what really caught my eye was this filter animation. Specifically, I was drawn to the way the mouse move animation seamlessly adapted even as the number of items changed with each filter. It looked complicated at first glance, so I set it aside, but just yesterday, I decided to give it a shot and try to recreate a similar experience. After a few attempts, I figured out the logic for the dynamic mouse move animation you are seeing now. This version is built using basic JavaScript, but it mimics what you saw on that website. And the best part is, it handles item filtering while keeping the mouse move effect smooth no matter how many items are displayed with each filter. In today's video, I'll walk you through how I built this using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a touch of GSAP. If you find this helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and might subscribe as well. For the full source code, check out the pro membership link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Let's start by building the basic structure. First, we'll create a container that holds everything. Within the container, I'll add a navigation bar divided into three columns. Each column will contain a few links. Later, we'll style this using Flexbox. Next, let's add the filters. We are keeping it simple, so we'll just create a few buttons, each labeled with the filter name. Each button will have a data filter attribute. This attribute will help us match the buttons with the corresponding items later in JavaScript. You could use the button's text content, but for this demo, I'm sticking with data attributes. I'll also assign an active class to the featured button, so it's applied when the page loads. Lastly, we'll create an empty container called items. This is where we'll dynamically generate the content for the filter cards using JavaScript. With the basic HTML in place, let's move on to the styling part. First, I'll set a global reset. This removes any default margins and paddings and ensure that all elements use the border box box sizing. For the HTML and body, I'm giving them full width and height along with a custom font. I'm also hiding any horizontal overflow to keep the layout clean. Next, I'll style the container to take up the full viewport width and height and hide any overflow. Now onto the navigation. I'll fix its position at the top of the page, set it to span the full width and give it some padding for spacing. To arrange the navigation items, I'll use Flexbox which will allow us to easily align the elements. For the links, I'm removing the default underline and transforming the text to uppercase. I'm also setting a small font size to match the design. To style the navigation layout, each nav items column will take up equal space using flex set to 1. The second column, which holds the main links, is centered using justify content center. While the third column aligns to the right. Now let's style the filter buttons. I am fixing the filters to the right side of the viewport, giving them a vertical layout using flex direction column and spacing them out with cap. Each button will have a simple style with a neutral background, uppercase text and a cursor pointer. When a button is active, it will have a black background and white text to indicate it's selected. Finally, I'll style the items container. I'm positioning it relative to the viewport, giving it some padding and arranging the items in a row using Flexbox. I've also set a gap between the items for spacing. Each item will have a fixed width of 250 pixels with the content aligned to the top. I'll give them a black background to contrast the images which are set to a width of 75 pixels.
with this structure in place, we are ready to move on to the JavaScript part for dynamic functionality. We'll begin by listening for when the document is fully loaded using DOM content loaded event. The first thing we do is register GSAP's custom is plugin. This allows us to create custom easing for animations. For this demo, I have defined a custom easing curve called hop, which gives a smooth power easing. Next, I have created a filter map object. This maps each filter category to specific items by their index. It helps us later when we want to show or hide items based on the filter that's clicked. Now let's get the essential DOM elements. We grab the items container where all our items will be displayed and all the filter buttons using query selector all so we can easily add event listeners. We also define two important variables, items width to track the total width of the items container and container width to get the width of the viewport. These are important when we calculate the mouse move effect later. To handle the smooth scrolling, we initialize current X and target X to keep track of the position of the items container. And we define alert factor which controls how smoothly the animation moves from one position to another. Now before we add the items, we define a get random height function. This simply returns a random height between 150 pixels and 225 pixels for each item, adding a bit of variety to our layout. Next, we will create the create items function, which is responsible for generating 50 items dynamically. For each item, I create a new div and assign it the class item. The height is set using our get random height function. Then I loop over the filter map object to add the appropriate class to each item. This class is based on the filter the item belongs to. For example, if an item belongs to the branding filter, it gets the branding class. Finally, I append an image to each item and add it to the items container. Once the items are generated, we call update items width to recalculate the total width, reset the position of the items and apply the mouse move effect. Next, we set event listeners on each filter button. When a button is clicked, it becomes active by adding the active class and we remove that class from the other buttons. We retrieve the filter name from the click buttons data filter attribute and pass it to the filter items function which handles the logic for showing and hiding items. In the filter items function, we loop through all the items. If the item matches the selected filter and it's currently hidden, we use GSAP to set its initial width to 25 pixels. And animate the width to 250 pixels using our custom using cow hop. This creates the smooth opening effect for the filtered items.
If an item doesn't match the selected filter, we animate its width to 0 pixels and then hide it by setting the display to none. Once the filtering is done, we call reset position to ensure the items are positioned correctly. And we also recalculate the total width for the mouse move effect. Next, for the mouse move effect, we use the apply mouse move effect function. It checks if the total width of the items is greater than the viewport. If it is, we add a mouse move event listener to the items container. When the mouse moves, we calculate how far the mouse is from the left side of the viewport. Based on that, we calculate the target X position for the items container which will make the item smoothly move left or right as you move the mouse. To animate the item smoothly, we use the animate function which runs continuously using request animation frame. It uses linear interpolation with the love factor to smoothly transition the items from the current position to the target position. Finally, we call animate to kick off the smooth scrolling effect and create items to generate the initial set of items. We also pass the filter featured to filter items so that the featured items are shown when the page loads first. And that's it, we have successfully recreated the filter and mouse move animation all powered by HTML, CSS, JavaScript and a touch of GSAP. I hope this tutorial helped you understand how to approach dynamic animations like this even when dealing with changing elements. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and if you want more content like this, consider subscribing. See you in the next video.